So about three or four years ago, I came across this fellow what was unloading a whole bunch of cars from his property. He said, are you interest, interested in this? And I said, well, I don't know. It is a four-door. Uh, what's it got? Well, it's not really rusty. I mean, there's a, there's a good fender that'll fit a two-door. There's a nice front bumper. The grill's kind of munched and the header panel. Uh, there's a little bit of heel rust on that fender. Not anything rusted through. Got some blisters. The quarter panels are actually solid, so a person could use the back half of the quarter panel on a two-door. A good pair of tail lights. Of course, it's this cane tail lights. And uh, but the backup lenses are cracked. But it's got a good back bumper and a good deck lid that you can use on a two-door, as long as it's not a fast back. Well, I don't know. Bench seat. This cane means low trim model. Uh, it's got a power glide, so it's two speed. Just ain't nothing special. So we better go see what it's got under the hood. <gasps> no! So you see these abandoned vehicle videos and they say, will it run? Well, I put my thumbnail of why bother? This is why. So as soon as I opened that, that's a 396, I said, yeah, I'm interested in this car. So this has it run probably 10 or 15 years. And I also see a lot of videos. These guys will take these cars that have been set in 10 or 15 years and all they do is throw a battery in it and pour gas down the carburetor. There's, if you're trying to save an engine and make it viable, that's just not the way you want to do it. So, we're going to see if we can get this fired up. Ready? Go. Our guest today is Stubby. Stubbs! Go oh, Stubbs! His owner just walked away, so he's having separation anxiety. Hey, I'm I'm here. Isn't that good enough? I right, do a couple of preliminary checks. Even before we test to see if this engine's stuck or not. Well, we've got no coolant. It doesn't even look moist or damp down in there. As I was saying, before we even roll this engine over, we want to pull the plugs and put oil in the cylinders. We've got full. He's full up on the oil. It's not milky, it's not over full, so it doesn't mean, well, it doesn't mean it didn't leak into the engine, but there's a good chance that the coolant did not leak into the engine. This is a California car. It was built in Los Angeles. What is this? Looks like a coolant heater. It's, it got the cord, it's tied to the heater hose. Where does it go? This looks like a rear here. I'll have to figure that out later. Uh, you can just about count on the inside of that carburetor. It looks just about like the outside of the carburetor. I mean, hopefully not, because it was in Northern California. What I do like is it's it has all the original wire looms on it. It's got the standard 1960s uh, secondary motor mounts. Don't laugh, that's exactly what that is. Oh, I got some debris on top of the carburetor. That's got to come off. There's probably no gas in here, but we're going to have to pull the inlet off the fuel pump. Because when we crank this over, we don't want to suck anything up that line. And we can't pull the line out and fill the fuel bowl because it'll just bleed right out of there. I'm going to do it from up top because all my friends know the low rider. Our guest victim today is Paul Bevilacqua. Aqua Velva. <laughs> Bellavacqua. <laughs> Bivwacker. Bushwacker. We'll pick a name for him sooner or later. Again, original wire looms. Gosh, it's such a beautiful thing. 
and the uh, genuine secondary motor mounts. PCV valves in there. Okay, so we've got to disconnect the inlet of the fuel pump, plug that off. I'm gonna pull the distributor cap, check the points. Might as well pull the, pull the points. And I'm gonna pull the plugs, put oil in the cylinders. Ready, go! I'd be curious to know if there's any fluid in that master cylinder. Oh. There's a huge abber right there in that box. I want to pop that cap off. Oh, I need tools out of that box, don't I? Uh -huh. Hey, what do you know? Got a big fat spark plug on it. Is that good or bad? Well, that means it's not a late model engine. I get the feeling there might not be much brake fluid in there. Uh, there ain't none. None? Zippero. What color is the reservoir? It looks green or black. But it doesn't look oxide red and rusty. <coughs> I'm going to tell you here in just a second. It does not look corroded. There's number mm -hmm. two. Actually looks pretty good. They're it's, due to be changed. I mean, the electrodes are not square, but... Uh, so it's got a little bit of debris deposited on it. But, that'll run. It's just got... Uh, it's a little bit wet on the bottom, but that's about it. It's clean! Yeah. It's clean. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. I might be able to move with this thing. I got a set of wheels. Want oh, the cat back on? Yes. So nothing gets in there. Like the pine needles. Now there's a problem with these spark plugs. They're champions! That's a problem? That is a problem. You want the thing back on there? Clip. Dang it. Okay. There we go. It's stunned. First I want to get the oil in the cylinders. That way it can be just sitting there soaking in while we're doing everything else. Mmm. Lots of ash deposit. I guess it was on the other one too. Oil burner. Puffy like a marshmallow. The wires are all loomed in the correct order. Someone after my own heart. So, Paul, are you a descendant from the famous Bevilacquas? I hope so. Oh, no! Hmm. I think she's consuming a bit of oil on number eight, Captain. Well, now, we're just going to have to do something about that. Well, the spark plug, not the, not the burning of the oil. At least you figured the cylinder didn't run dry. If the spark plug's wet, I'm pretty sure that the, uh, so is the cylinder. I can't get it in there. I've usually found five squirts to be adequate. Where are you? Yeah, good. I should have blown out around the spark plugs before doing this. But oh well. It's got power steering. Power steering, power brakes. Mm. Must have been a different guy working on this side. He's an oil burner. I cannot afford to drop a spark plug under here. Because then I'll be jacking up the car to retrieve it. Hey! A fairly clean one. We got three good cylinders. Four. Oil can. Now, how do I get it in here? 
I think I'm going to hack a piece of washer tubing. If there is such a thing. That? Oh, that's the antenna lead. I'm sure that's factory routing. The big one comes from the reservoir. The little one goes to the nozzle. The passenger side. This is the driver's side. Sacrilege! Should have done that the first time. <laughs> yeah. All right. With that set a spell. No sense of draining the hose out onto the ground. I wonder if the throttle's stuck. It's not. Ooh. What was that sound? It sounds like there's something squirting. You got that extension on top of the thing. Oh, well, that don't oh. make it go oh. under the carburetor. So I had uh, some fluid in it, huh? It's just my yeah. imagination, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's dive into the distributor, shall we? What's that look like? Oh, it's corroded. It has bugs in it. It has rust in it. That means the counterweights haven't been cleaned and oiled. No dropping of the screws, please. Why? It has rusty counterweights. And more bugs. Let's see what we have for corrosion. Oh yeah. Way. Way corroded. Not only are they corroded, they's plumb wore out. Misaligned, worn down. But that <laughs> shall not keep us from our appointed rounds. Old days, good times I remember. Let's see you do this with your Tesla. We found an abandoned Tesla, been sitting for 15 years. We're gonna set a solar panel on the roof. And wait five days, and then we're gonna drive it. Well, we should have enough shiny on there to make contact. Oh, I need a jumper lead. I don't have a key for this. I got a hot wire. <sighs> yeah, we should probably find out if this rolls over. Now that we've let our oil sit for a little bit. Yes. I like it. Now, old school says roll it two revolutions so that you know you don't have anything stuck in the valve train because the camshaft runs two to one, or the crankshaft runs two to one to the camshaft. So you need two crankshaft revolutions for one revolution of the camshaft to tell you whether or not you've got a stuck valve and you can't make it open with the camshaft. But it hurts my hands. I just have to get over it. There's one. It's getting easier. Ah, that's gotta be two. Oh yeah. Uh oh, it's stuck. Okay, we got past it. Man, you know what that means? That means we gotta clean some spark plugs. Probably fill up the air tank and blow all the debris from the carburetor. I don't feel like it. It's not like you're gonna run this engine. It's just to find out whether or not it's viable because you're gonna rebuild it. So whatever little pieces of pine needles hanging around in the intake ain't gonna hurt a thing. But if we fire this up, we can only let it run a few seconds because the exhaust is not laying on the ground. It's set down in the ground, surrounded by pine needles, and this is fire season in Southern Oregon. Not a good thing. The other thing we're gonna do is roll this over with the plugs out of it, check for spark. And the other thing that's gonna do, we could do a compression check, 
I should probably do that. I'll get the compression gauge. We'll run a compression check on it, and by the time you're done running a compression check, you will have pumped oil up to the top of the engine. I haven't noticed this before, but something's been digging its way under there. Wonder if we'll meet up during this procedure. I have a friend, and he has these. And these are keys. Master keys for the 1950s to 60s General Motors. So, in lieu of me doing it, I'll hand them off to Paul Bevilacqua. Bivouacca, Bushwacca, Aqua Velva Man. So is it only the brown ones? No. Okay. Start with this one. Start with the last one. Because it's always the last one. Yeah. Well, this could be the last one. Could be the last time you ever do this. Oh! Bingo! Bingo! What number was it? Uh, you weren't counting? Yeah, I got them all set up here. One, two, number 19. 19th try. Not bad. It's about halfway through the string. No, not even close. Um, try it in the trunk. Okay, try the trunk? Yeah. I haven't been in the trunk yet. No. No? No. Trunk is a different key. Okay, so should we keep on going? Oh well. That's not the important part. Okay. The important part is ignition. So now that we have the key, we will connect the battery. We are going to actually try and crank it over with the key? Or right. jump it? We're going to crank, try to crank it over with the key. Okay, we're going to see if we got spark and at the same time do a compression check. So let the compression hit five times. Alright, you tell me when to stop. After you hear it hit five times. Okay. Here we go. Nothing. Nothing? Absolutely zip. Is it in neutral? It is. It looks like it. In park? Okay. There we go. Turn that. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I don't like nothing. You got anything? I don't even have anything on the dash. Turn on the headlights. Uh, Nothing. That means we have a problem. So how many amperes does that put out? I don't know. I can't remember. It'll turn the lights on though if it does. Yes. Should. We have anything? Nope. Well, that stinks. How about we uh, try and crank it? Well, if we don't have lights, it ain't gonna crank. That says it's ready. I see that. But there's no lights on. I don't know. Maybe I have the... You do have the switch on, right? Do you see anything flickering? No. You can always try stomping on the high beam switch a couple of times. Okay. There's no park brake, or park lights, I mean. No park lights, no headlights. So that means we have no connection to body power or ground. This is going to break off. Guarantee our problems right here. Okay. Okay, I don't guarantee it. No. I'm pretty certain. Then I'll keep on going. Yeah, in fact, this is a 3 8 as well. Got that loose? I have it loose, but it's not loose loose. Well, let me, let me get this loose. Okay. See if I can get this loose. Otherwise... Going loose. All right, continue. No, no, go ahead. Surely a socket would have been better. Yeah, I agree. I'll stop calling you Shirley. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe. It's not a very big cable to be handling all the power that it's yeah. going to need. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess all you need is this going to the starter. Right. And then you just need something off of that to power the lights or whatever that is going to power. Did you torque that? I did. I didn't hear you click. I knew you were going to say that. I don't click. Yeah, socket would have been much faster. 
<laughs> you think? Let's see if the lights light up. All right. Now, will it arc when it connects the negative cable? Ready? Yeah. It did not spark. No. Lights didn't come on either. Let me see, make sure the lights are still on. They are not. And they still still are not. Can't possibly be the cables, can it? That's the reason why I wanted the uh, jack. Now there's power on the cable. Okay. So there's power on the other side of the thermo block, and that's the I mean, main power feed for the fuse block. Well, that can be fuse. No. No. There's no. We got fuse. the lights on. Just to... there's no fuse for the headlights. Okay. okay. All right, we've got power and ground throughout. So that can only be... So should we try and just crank it then? A fusible link. Oh. No, because there's no power going to yeah. the body of the car. Yeah. Who'd have thought that would work? Hmm. Because the horn is always on. The relay is always. I'm gonna say even uh, even if the key's off, it's working, right. The right? horn is always on. So that's why that's used in the headlights. And the horn re relay is right there. So since we know we have power at the horn relay, and we know that. That the headlight switch is powered full time by the battery. In theory, we should be able to connect a jumper lead to the positive of the full powered headlight switch and or uh, horn. And that should bring the lights on. Nope. Woo! Oh my goodness! That must have been the ground. Let's try the other one. There you go. You got one light. Out of all four. What part of redneck do you not understand? I got a headlight. Mm -hmm. Looks kind of dim. Yes, it does. Probably a low beam, maybe. Or so that. that means that the thing inside the car should be on. Because we're back feeding. But there's nothing inside. Doesn't make any difference, does it? No. Nope. So there are two things underneath the hood. That are ignition. One is the coil, which comes through a resistor, and the other one is the alternator. It has to be energized from the ignition switch. Which there should be power at the back of the alternator to start with and the test light says no it also says no over here the ground. test light says yes Let's see what else we can start on fire well we got something there okay so that's voltage regulator. See if there's a light in the dash. Yes? Hit the crank and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, so the alternator generator light is on? It... Yes. And when you turn the key off it stays on? Yes. Okay, so that's just the light there. That's just the lead that goes to the alternator light. So the generator light is on with nothing being plugged in. So if I go to the positive side of the coil, oh, well, it shows we have power to the ignition. We just don't have any crank. Starter bad. Starter solenoid is bad. Or the connection to the starter solenoid. Well, yeah. 
So either a neutral switch or an ignition switch. Some lube is in order. I was going to say, you might want to. Oh, some there it is. <laughs> oh, look at that. Just as soon as you said that. Connect the battery cable. Connected? Connected. Alright, so we go battery to solenoid. And we get nothing. This is not good. No. Oh, again, it could be a neutral safety switch. Ow! But where would that be located? Might I have a test light? Do you want it? Yeah. Okay. There you go. We get power here. We do. Neutral safety switch. This one it is? Yep. Okay, we'll wire it together. So it's a neutral safety switch. And I'm not going to get to that till tomorrow. But for you, it's in three, two, one. One little jumper lead. Ha, 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 ha. In case you're wondering, that's a backup light switch. Lubricate. Alright, battery's all charged up. Key on. Oh, yes! Now I'm going to roll this over. I'm going to give it five hits on the compression tester. Oh! It's already bumped up to 90. Just on what little I did. Where you at? There you are. Okay, so you can't see it. But it's up there. Now, where's this thing? Right there. gotta play back. It shows 100 pounds of compression on number one. I gotta play this back now. Alright, so with the key in the on position, the generator light is on. We shall check for power to the coil. Yes, power through the coil. Yes. Oh, you know what? I'll bet. I will bet. If I would have hooked up the wires to the ignition, I might have gotten spark. Let's do that, shall we? What was that? 10 seconds? Okay. Put the battery lead. Not getting any arc on the battery. Points are in the... Are they open? I got it. Looks like they are. Must be open. Okay, we got power there. Got power to that side of the points. Let's switch the compression tester. To number three, and give it a whirl. Gosh. It's got the long reach adapter. I left that in the cylinder. Of course. Paul ain't here today. And the other day when he was here, he wanted me. Well, there's a socket I won't get back for a while. He wanted me to uh, get a jack under this thing, get it up off the ground. I didn't want to. Mostly cause a foreign I uh, like the low rider ability to work on the thing. Cleaning down over these fenders. It's a bit more pleasant. Wong Leech Adapa.
I guess maybe they don't have to be in there as tight as I put it. The fire extinguisher is at the ready. Alright, so compression check and ignition check. Oh, oh come on. It's got to have more than 40, doesn't it? Did it spark? Did it spark? Why, yes, playback shows we have significant spark. So we'll go back over to compression testing. I just want to make sure that it's not just leaking off or bouncing back, back on my gauge. I'm going to hit it again. Well, with every hit, it seems to be coming up, so I'm going to theorize that it's debris on the valves. One, the other, or both. If you recall the 59 Pontiac 389 video, where I resurrected an engine that had zero compression on number 8, I went through the valve cleaning process prior to making it start, which I'm not going to do with this engine. Um, I was able to get the compression from 40 pounds to 120 pounds pounds. I did a cylinder leak test and kept popping the valves until they sealed up. Put air to the cylinder and you can hear whether it's leaking out the exhaust or out the intake. Then you just take a hammer and keep smacking the top of the valve. Work off the loose debris. So you can get that valve to seal up. Bring your compression back. But I ain't gonna do that. So just the running of it, the operation of the engine, should be sufficient to uh, improve the compression over time. Number five, let's see what happens. Well, that one ain't happy either. Let's roll it over a bit more and see if it comes up. Slowly. Number seven. How do you spell that? S E B M. Seven. Sounded better in the cranking end of it. Yeah, hundred pounds. Even got the plugs and the exhaust manifolds from them California emissions. Wow, look at that! 170. That's enough to make a run. That sounds like zero compression to me. Why, it looks like zero compression as well. Oh, do I pull the valve cover? No, let's check the rest of them first. It didn't get too many turns before it came out. I didn't hear anything leaking by. Still would have been better than zero compression. Right, I'm going to try that again. Not even a whisper. It must be pushing all of its compression over into number two. I guess it ain't too bad to pull this valve cover off. Take a look and see if our valve is hung open. See, it sounds about like 40 pounds. Ah, 30. We're going to pull that valve cover anyway. Yes, I've decided. I'm gonna... It's one thing to have low compression and be able to build up. But to have no compression, uh, we got to find out why. If I've got a valve hung open, I certainly don't want to fire the engine up and rev it with a valve hung open during fire season. And so Oregon. What will you give us today? 
a screen you can't read. What do I need? It looks like a three eighths. Also give us the opportunity to find out just how much sludge is inside this thing. Well, you missed it. I thought I hit record, but I didn't. Pretty clean inside. Two had zero compression, and uh, the rockers are both tight. That one's loose. That one's loose. Which means that the lifters have bled off. <sighs> What'd that look like? Play back. Okay, so on two, now the rockers are movable. Cylinder leak test is the next thing to do. However, a little difficult. To do, have to air up a tank, bring it out here. Oh, do I want to go through all that? Not really. You got to back the rockers off to do the cylinder leak test. We definitely got oil up to the top of the engine because we got oil laying in exhausted number number eight. Oh, what to do? What to do? It'll take me at least an hour to get all that stuff prepped and ready and out here and set up. But for you, it's in three, two, one. So, I'm going to back these off. That's one quarter, that's a half. Three quarter, one. And a quarter, and a half, and three quarter, and two. Whoops. Three, four, three, and a half, four. I'm working off an air tank. So I'm limited on capacity. Engage. Oh. It's coming out the crank em case. I'm not the carburetor at all. Well, that's a bummer. We can hope for stuff for rings, can't we? We can pop the valves anyway. Well, you know it's changing the tone. Well, that's because there's no air left. Let it out real quick. Alright, well, there's no point in going much further with it. Put the valve cover back on, put spark plugs back in, throw some fuel down it, get the distributor cap back on. Roll it over and see if it'll pop and bang. But that's going to be the next episode. So until the next time, for Redneck Restorations, this old junk, I'm Jeff Brett. Oh, just leave the gates open.
and we can't pull the line out and fill the fuel bowl with carburetor because it'll just bleed right out of there. Have we ever moved with this thing? I got a set of wheels. Oh, a lot of ash deposit. See, it's an oil burner. Tell me when it's focused. Uh -huh. I think so. Uh huh, you think so? What? Yeah, it looks like it. I can't tell. I don't have my glasses on. Oh, well, that's no help. What's this? Somebody didn't bolt. into the starter. No wonder the wires have been repaired from laying up against the, the manifold. Had some water in it too. <laughs> Bonus! Don't forget there's a camera right there. Oh. So. I didn't realize that was running. Yeah. B-roll. Gotta zoom it in on my hands. Well, you could stand back and use the zoom because. Okay, where's the zoom at? Zoom is here, oh, right. wide and tight. Right. Uh -huh. Because right now, this camera, if I show me, it's got you standing there holding the camera, so you need to back up. Okay. And back up, and right there. So didn't you get there from here? Get a hold of yep. it. Yeah. Got all steady, steady as heck. Trying. How steady is heck? Pretty steady. I suppose that would be beneficial. Much better. Yes. That means we got to clean some spark plugs. And what else does that mean? Spark plugs. I should probably fill up the air tank surrounded by pine needles. And this is fire season. And this is fire season in Southern Oregon. The other thing we're going to do is roll this over with the plugs out of it. Oh, I didn't record that. I gotcha. Yeah, but oh. B-roll. Hmm. B-roll! You can turn that off. Okay. I feel the termites beating my butt right now. Ugh. I have a friend. And he has these. So that means we got to pull apart. Body. That was smart. Yeah. Wasn't supposed to do that, was it? Supposed to turn it off. Turn it off. Then disconnect. Yes. I remember you saying that on the, on the video. I think so. Your advice could be much faster. Well, when you yearn, learn them youngins on YouTube. When you yearn them lungins. <laughs> we should be able to connect a jumper. Wow, look at that. Oh, oh that's not my jumper. This is my jumper. Got the long reach adapter. I left that in the cylinder. It's not a 5 8 It's not a 13 16 What size could it possibly be? Perhaps the one I don't have with me? Could be the one. Zero. Sitting on the release button. What will you give us today? A screen you can't read. Nothing. Oh, that's because every compression tester has a check valve in it. I must now remove. Did you think I brought a valve core removal tool with me? 
<laughs> you know, I have the distinct. You know, I have the distinct impression. <laughs>